guys. Um, how are the homeworks going? The last one was a little bit of a pain, I hear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so today what we're going to do is link the common filter, which is a way for us to estimate the posterior after we make an observation. We have a prior belief, we make an observation, then we form another belief. I'm going to call that a posterior. And we want to we link this to another domain of state estimation called Bayesian estimation. And basically what we want to show is that the two are related. That when I tell you that after I made an estimate, I formed my, took my prior and I multiplied this gain by this error in my prediction and I formed my new estimate, my posterior, what I was doing is really finding the mean of a distribution. And when I tell you that I have an uncertainty about my estimate, P, what I'm really saying is that that's the variance of that distribution. And so we're going to formulate the, pro the same problem in, um, in a Bayesian framework, which means that we're going to say we have some um, prior belief, we have some likelihood model, likelihood model that says given that, you know, the, the, uh, some x that we're trying to estimate, this is the likelihood of measuring y. The prior is what's the probability of x to begin with, and then we're going to form a posterior. <coughs> the posterior is saying that, well, you know, what's the probability of x given that I just saw this y? Now, the, the, the trick along the way is to figure out how to take a joint probability distribution and factor it into two probability distributions. One, which is going to be the prior probability distribution. The other, which is going to be the conditional. And the conditional is going to be what we're interested in, which is going to be the posterior. And the, the whole business today is to figure out how to take a, a Gaussian distribution and divide it up into two parts. So we can, when we multiply it, we have one part, which is our prior belief. The other part is what we're interested in, which is the posterior. And if we do that, then what we'll end up with is to demonstrate that what we were doing with the common filter, we were estimating the mean and variance of the posterior distribution. So um, let's, uh, let's begin by, by talking about, I guess, what, what, uh, what our aim today is. So, we, we start with what we call our generative model, which says, what's the probability of y given x? And you know, when we say, find the maximum likelihood, this is a data that we observed. And these are the states that we want to estimate. And when, when we did a maximum likelihood model, what we found was that we found the x that maximized this probability. So the x that maximized this probability was called the maximum likelihood model. So that's x hat ml. When we did a common filter, we did something interesting. We said, well, we have this thing we're going to call x hat of n given n. That's going to be equal to our prior plus something that we're going to call this gain. And that's going to be compared to what we observed minus what would be predicted on that trial. And th this, was our, this was our posterior, we call this. This is our posterior. And this was our prior. And then we also had some uncertainty associated with this. We said P of n given n is our posterior uncertainty after we formulated the, the, the mean. And we said that that's going to be equal to you know, I minus K times some, something that's related to the way y is related to x. If that's related to it by c, then it's going to be something like this. So we said this is going to be our posterior uncertainty. It's going to be a posterior um, value, if you will. And so in a way, this is the variance, and this is the mean. So in Bayesian estimation, what you're trying to do is you're going to say, if this is your model of how the data is generated, what you're really after is p of x given y which is the posterior probability. What's the posterior probability that, that you know, given the data that you observed, what's the most, you know, what, that the, the data came from some x? And what you want to know is that how likely are these different x's that you can have, given that you have observed this y. And today what we want to show is that this distribution, this posterior probability, if we find the x that maximizes this posterior probability, then what we are really finding is 
the distribution that has this mean and this variance covariance. That this mean and this variance are the mean and the variance associated with this posterior probability. So this is the probability distribution. This is its mean. This is its variance. And that's where we're going today. So um, to do that, you know, let me just show you the basic Bayes rule. So you know, suppose that I have, suppose that I find a better pen. This is better. So I have you know, two variables. I have some probability of x and y. And uh, the way we derive Bayes' rule is through the, um, uh, the uh, joint probability distribution. So x can take some variable xi. Um, y can take some value yi. And probability of this joint occurrence is, is, of course, the probability of x being xi given that y is equal to yi times the probability of y is equal to yi. And that's equal to also the probability of y equal yi. Ah, these pens are dying on me. Let's see if red is better. No. I'm sorry, guys. I guess I'll just have to push harder. Is that legible? Come closer so you can see it. Yeah, I, I write small anyway. So basically, uh, if I set those things equal to each other, then we have probability of x is equal to xi given that y is equal to yi is equal to the probability of y is equal to yi given x is equal to xi times this divided by the probability of y is equal to yi. And the names that we use to describe these probabilities are as follows. This is called the posterior. This is called the likelihood is called a prior. This is called a marginal. So basically, I take my likelihood multiplied by the prior probability divided by the marginal, and I get what's called the posterior probability. All right. So we, you know, you guys are familiar with this. We did this stuff on the first lecture of the, the class. And what I want to do today is to show that if I take the joint probability distribution for the kinds of models that we've been doing and write the probability for x and y, x being the variable that we're trying to estimate, y being the variable that we're measuring, if I write the joint probability distribution for a Gaussian relationship, then I have some mean, I have some variance. And now what I have to do is to factor that joint probability distribution in terms of a conditional probability and a prior probability. And if I do that, then this conditional probability is going to have a mean and a variance that's going to be precisely these equations. So that's what we're doing today. And to do it, we're going to have to learn a little bit of a math that has to do with how to break apart matrices diagonalize them, because in a Gaussian distribution, you have things like determinants, right? You have things like inverses of the variance. So you know, in a, in a Gaussian distribution, you normalize things by the determinant of the matrix, which is the variance-covariance matrix. And in, the, and in the exponential, you have a inverse of the variance. So if I have a joint probability distribution that has some variance, right, that's a matrix. I'm going to have to be able to break it up, both its inverse and its determinant. So I can write it in terms of multiplication of one Gaussian times another Gaussian. So we're going to factor, basically, a Gaussian distribution into two different Gaussians. And that's what's hard to do. And we'll do it. We'll figure it out how to do it. When we do it, we'll end up to see that what we have is precisely what the, um, the uh, 
mean and the variance of the Coleman filter is. All right. So here's my prior. Oh God. Hmm. Let's see. Do we have any chance of writing anything on the board today? Ah, yes. Here we go. Good. Problem with this guy is that he's got no no lid lift on it. So okay. So x is normally distributed with um, some mean we're going to call x hat and p at minus one. It's a great pen, but it's got no felt left on it. And I have um, y, which is equal to cx plus epsilon, where epsilon is normally distributed with mean zero and variance r. So um, what I'm interested in is writing the probability, the joint probability of x and y. That's what we're interested in. David, any chance we can get another pen? Oh, yes. Excellent. Also, this works, but the, the, the thing on it. Is You're going to charge it for that. Yeah. I'm going to start carrying my own. Yeah, excellent. OK. So we're interested in the joint probability. And I want to, and I want to write down what that looks like. So um, what is this? this quantity. Well, basically, this is some normal distribution with some mean, call it mu x and mu y, and some variance, variance of x, covariance of x and y, covariance of y and x, and variance of y. So that's the, the basic structure of this, no, this uh, joint probability is this. So it has this mean and it has this variance, covariance matrix. And I want to know what those things are. Well, what's the expected value of x? So here it is. What's the expected value of y? So this is a normal distribution. What's the mean of x? It's just x hat of n given n minus 1. What's the mean of y? C x hat of n given n minus 1. That's the mean. And what's the variance covariance structure? Well, variance of x is p and minus 1. Variance of y, what's variance of y? It's variance of this system, which is c times variance of x times c transpose plus r, which is equal to c, p of n, n minus 1, c transpose plus r. So variance of y is c. The prior uncertainty, C transpose plus R. Now, what's the covariance of uh, X and Y? What's the covariance of X with Y? That's equal to the expected value of X minus its mean, mu X, times Y minus its mean, mu Y transpose. X minus mean of that is x hat. I'm just going to put x hat to put my um, prior estimate of x times y minus c um, x hat transpose. Let's multiply this out. Um, x times y minus x times c. Uh, that's a transpose. That's this expected value, which is equal to the expected value of x times y. What is y? Here's this equation for y. x times cx plus epsilon. That's x times y. Minus the expected value of x times x hat, which is going to be x hat x hat t c transpose minus x hat times expected value of y, which is c times x hat plus x hat x hat c transpose. 
and this cancel out, I have this term. So this is just zero. So covariance of x and y is just going to be, this is just the variance, um, uh, the, the variance of x times c is going to be n minus 1 times um, um, c transpose. Let's see if I, oh I think I lost the transpose. Yeah, yeah, this is a transpose here, sorry. So this, this is just a variance of, of x, so that's just going to be p of n, n minus 1, c transpose. So this is covariance of x and y. So I'm going to write down here um, p of n, n minus 1, c transpose. Um, the covariance of y and x is just going to be the transpose of that. This is going to be c times p of n n minus 1. P is a symmetric matrix, so it transposes itself. Okay, so that's, that's the, the joint probability distribution. Okay, so why did I write the joint probability distribution? Because what I want to do is take this normal distribution. So here's its mean. It's a vector. Here's this variance covariance. It's a matrix. And I want to be able to write this in terms of something that has p of x in it, because it's my prior, and then something else. This something else is going to be my p of x given y. And I want to know what the shape of it is. I know what this is, right? Here it is. p of x is up there. It has a mean of x hat, it has a variance of p. So I want to be able to factor this normal distribution to get this. Now what does it mean to factor? Well, so what, does, what does this mean here, this, this, this um, distribution? Well, p of x and y is going to be equal to, say that, say that x is a p by 1 vector, y is a q by 1 vector. What that means is that this is going to look like this. 1 over square root of 2 pi raised to the power of p plus q times determinant of, let's call the variance covariance mat matrix, this large, um, what is that, a sigma or a, I don't know, yep. sigma, capital sigma, let's call it. Let's call this matrix here, capital sigma, times exponential of minus one half, um, the vector x minus x hat y minus c x hat transpose times this matrix its invert its inversion times x minus x hat okay so that's what it's just a scalar right this is just a probability distribution you give me x and y i'm going to give you a number and this is what I mean when I write that, that equation. And this is its variance covariance matrix that's, that's inside there. Now my problem is, what I, what I want to do is I want to write this p of x, y 
in terms of something times an exponential that looks like this. Raised to the power of, so p of x, right? This is going to be my, oh, I'm sorry. Um, no, that's correct. That's what my problem was. OK, so the, the size of y is uh, q. And its variance, covariance, is going to be this. Let's call this structure. So I'm going to take my variance, covariance matrix, and I'm going to write it as sigma 1, 1, sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, 1, sigma 2, 2. And so this is going to be determinant of sigma 2, 2 times exponential of minus 1 half y minus its prior, which is going to be c times um, x hat transpose sigma 2, 2 minus 1 y minus c x hat exponential. So what I want to do is take my joint probability distribution, factor out this term and whatever remains is going to be my p of y given x. Yeah? Uh, I'm confused about the p of x given y, sorry. Sorry? Oh, the, the, uh, the, well, a lot, but no, the, the, um, the, uh, from the first part of the second one, the prior is a distribution on the first board on x, and then we switch to y. Well, second. no. So if you look at so I can write it, I can write my joint probability in terms of a conditional probability that's p of x given y or p of y given x. Right, yeah, no, right. I okay. I guess, so is, is, are we looking for the prior distribution on our observation y? But like yeah, yeah, so you know that's our prediction, right? Our, our, our prediction on every trial is dependent on our prior of x and gives us also a y, right? Because we also have what the y would be. We make a prediction on y on every x. Right, so p of y is easy to say what it is. p of x is our prior of x, definitely, but we also have a prior on y because we have a prior on x. Okay, so in this factorization, of course, this has to be a p of y. And you're finding the uh, posterior. Yeah, because that's what you can see, that's what we want, right? Because we want to know what x is. This is the joint probability. We can compute this. Here it is. Yeah. And I know what p of y is. Why? Because, well, you know, my p of y is just going to be the mean. Um, here it is. It's going to be with this mean and this variance. So now what I need to know is what remains in this. If I, f if I could factor this exponential, in terms of this, then what does it re what remains? That has to be p of x given y. Posterior. That has to be the posterior. Right. Yeah. So the question is, how do we do it? You know, how do we take this matrix and find its inverse so that we have one term over here, the rest of it here, find its determinant so we have one term here, the rest of it here? That's our problem. How do we factor those out? Questions? Do you see the basic idea of where we're going? OK. Let me go over it one more time. So in principle, we can always write the joint probability distribution of x and y. Because we have our model that says what x is and how y is related to it. 
we can compute the variance of y, which becomes this term here. We can compute the variance of x, which becomes this, this term here. And the covariance of x and y come from this equation. So then we have the probability distribution for the joint variable. And th what it is is basically you know, this, this hairy looking scalar quantity. And now what I want to do is that, all right, if this is, this is true, then Bayes' rule tells me that I can take my you know, prior probability on y, multiply it by the conditional probability, the posterior, and get what you have in your joint probability. So how do I divide up the, these, uh, these uh, um, ex um, variance covariance matrices? So what we're going to learn is the problem of factoring this matrix so that essentially I can take this quantity and divide the rest of this matrix by that quantity. And so that sounds really you know, weird. What, is it, what does that mean? I'll show you what it means. So say you have some matrix M. You have some matrix M. And it has you know, quantities E, F, and G, and H. So it's just blocks of some, you know, have to be, of course, the right size. This is whatever the, um, the, my matrix is. And what I'm going to do is multiply the left and, left and right side of this matrix by two quantities, two matrices, that have a determinant of identity of 1. So I'm going to multiply the left and the right side of this matrix by something else. So here's my M matrix. And I'm going to multiply on one side by this quantity. And on the right side, by this quantity. So the determinant of this matrix, this times this minus this times this, is 0. I'm sorry, it's 1. The determinant of this matrix similarly is 1. And so let's multiply this out to see what we get. So um, I'm going to multiply these two first. This times E minus FH minus 1 times G. Get F. H minus 1, H, which is just identity. So that's going to be 0 over there. This time it's going to be 0 um, minus G. So that's going to be now multiplied by this matrix. OK, so I get this times that minus 0 So this becomes g times um, g um, minus g. And uh, this should become just h. Let's see if that's right. Yeah. OK, so that's just equal to. So why is that interesting? What we did is that we multiplied our matrix M 
by some matrix on the left side, some matrix on the right side. And I'm going to call this matrix Z. Oh, sorry, X. Be consistent with it. Just doesn't matter. We call it, we're going to just give them a name. And this matrix Z. So the determinant of this new thing that I have, this, this, when I multiply these things, so the determinant of M, um, it didn't change when I multiplied it by this X and Z. Its determinant is going to be the same because the determinant of this new thing here is just going to be determinant of X times determinant of M times determinant of Z. The determinant of X is 1. The determinant of Z is 1. So that's going to be equal to the determinant of M. And what I end up with is this particular determinant, which is going to be determinant of x times determinant of m times determinant of z, because these two determinants are, are 1. And that's going to be the determinant of my, my final thing, which is going to be determinant of e minus fh minus 1 g times the determinant of h. So why is this useful? Well, look what we just did. We took a matrix, and keep in mind, the matrix that we're interested in is this, is this sigma up here. And I just said that determinant of sigma is going to be equal to the determinant of, so what's, what's going to be? E is going to be sigma 1, 1 minus F is going to be sigma 1, 2. H is going to be sigma 2, 2 minus 1. G is going to be sigma 2, 1 times the determinant of sigma 2, 2. So the determinant of this is equal to this. Why is this useful? Well, because look what I just did. I just took the determinant of sigma, which is what I'm interested in, right? Because sigma is, appears here in my denominator. I want to be able to divide it into two parts. I want to have one thing over here, and I want to have the rest over here, right? So I just did that. I just took this, and I split it into two parts. The determinant of sigma 2, 2, which is going to be a part of the variance for this guy, the probability of y. And then what remains is this the determinant of this structure. So that's going to be the variance, covariance, of whatever's over here, if the determinant was done correctly. All right. But I'm not done. I need to also be able to factor out the inverse, sigma 2, 2 inverse. right? So I'll have to be able to take sigma inverse and write it in terms of this and whatever's left of it. And, and we're going to do that. So how are we going to do that? Well, um, let's, let's go back to what we just wrote. We wrote that I took my matrix M, multiplied by X, multiplied by Z, and I got this new matrix here. Let's call this W. So I have X times M times Z is equal to W. So what's the inverse of this quantity? It's going to be Z minus 1, M minus 1, X minus 1 is going to be equal to w minus 1. And so that means that m minus 1 is going to be equal to um, w minus 1 times x times z. And what does that mean? Let me give myself some space here. Let's write down what that means. So m minus 1 is, is that quantity there. That's equal to z, which is that matrix there. So let's write that out. That's going to be identity minus h minus 1 times g, which is
w minus 1 is this. times um, x, our first matrix. So I have now my determinant written in terms of something that has sigma 2, 2. And then if you look at this quantity, you notice that at its middle, my inverse here, look what it has. It has a sigma 2, 2 at the right place. Why is that in the right place? Well, because what I need is have this quantity, right? And I'm going to be able to get it because I have a sigma 2, 2 by itself sitting in the, uh, um, um, in the uh, rightmost column of this, uh, of this matrix. So I'll do it now. So let me now take it apart and, um, and write my, um, my joint probability distribution in that way. So um, this this quantity is written as follows. This is written as this. This is called a sure complement. It's just a shorthand of writing this, this terminology. Um, to, to give you a little bit of intuition of what this means, actually, so this, this, this is um, not an unfamiliar thing. So sigma 1, 1 is the variance so just to, just to connect things a little bit before we get too far to our, to our uh, common filter. Sigma 1, 1, this is equal to the, the prior, prob the, the, the prior um, posterior, sorry, the prior uncertainty of x minus sigma 1, 2 as the covariance that's going to be equal to um, the uh, Uh, let's see, P of n given n minus 1 times CT. Sigma 2, 2 inverse is this quantity. And sigma 2, 1 is the covariance C times P. If you guys remember your equation for the common gain, it was, it was this term here. This is k of n. And so this term this term here the determinant, when I wrote it, well, this, this matrix here, the, when I factored out sigma 2, 2, what I end up with is um, uh, I minus K of N times C times the variance of P. And this is now, you can see that that's, a, that's the, posterior, um, the posterior variance that I've, that I've been using. So this is P of n given n. OK, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let me write down the, um, the, 
the probability. So I have p of x and y is equal to some normal distribution. And uh, p plus q times the determinant of uh, sigma times the exponential of minus 1 half uh, vector x minus its mean, which is um, my x hat of n and minus 1. Um, let me make things easy. Let me call this mu, mu of x. Its mean is going to be this way, y minus mu of y transpose times um, So that's our original um, joint probability distribution. So I, I just wrote for you that um, I can take the determinant here and write it as uh, the determinant of this new matrix times the determinant of sigma 2, 2. And uh, which, you know, of course, what that means is that I can take this term here. I can take 1 over square root of 2 pi p plus q times this, and I can write it as 1 over square root of 2 pi to the p times this the new determinant times 1 over square root of 2 pi q times sigma 2, 2. So I can do this. Right. I can take that determinant of the variance covariance matrix associated with the joint probability, and I can write it in terms of a determinant of something else, sigma sigma 2, 2, the sure complement, times the uh, determinant of sigma 2, 2, which happens to be the determinant of my prior probability. Now what I need to do is the same thing here. Take this exponential and write it in terms of multiplication of two separate exponentials. So this exponential looks like this. This exponential has minus 1 half. And so this inverse is this, right? This, this term here. So it's going to be x minus its mean, y minus its mean, transpose, times So I have to take that exponential and write it in terms of multiplication of two separate exponentials. So um, let me take the right part of, uh, of that equation. And uh, because it's easy to see that this is i times x minus mu x plus this times this. So So that is going to be exponential of something. And then what is this going to be? Um, uh, this is, when I multiply this out, I get x minus mu x minus sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, 2, minus 1, y minus mu y. And on the, on the bottom, I get 0 minus y minus mu y.
Okay, so I'm going to keep multiplying now. I get an exponential of minus one half times x minus mu x minus sigma one two sigma two two minus one y minus mu y. transpose times this term, sigma 1, 2, times this, and times um, um, so I just I have a minus one half times this quantity times this times this quantity up here plus this quantity times this times this. This is just another another scalar. So I have an exponential that has two components to it. And if you look at this, what, what I've just done is that I've taken my determinant and I've written it in terms of this quantity times this quantity. And I've also taken my exponential, which had this quantity as of its variance covariance, and I've written it in terms of something squared this times this variance covariance times itself plus another component, y minus its mean, times sigma 2, 2 times this quantity. So what I've done is that I've taken a normal distribution with mean x minus mu x, um, sorry, with, with mean mu x and mu y and variance this quantity sigma, and I've written it in terms of um, this new quantity. Let's see if I can write it. Another normal distribution, and its mean is going to be this quantity mu x plus epsilon 1, 2, epsilon 2, 2 minus 1, y minus mu y. Uh, sorry, that's my variance. I think I got that right. Yeah. All right. So. Wait, that has y dependence yeah, from the first yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course, of course, it has to. Let me show you what that means. So let me let me write it over here so we can we can put in our numbers. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So so let's see what that means. Let me, I guess I need to be able to refer to what I just wrote up there. So let me a little bit more. All right. 
So I said if you take a normal distribution that has mean mu x and mu y and variance covariance sigma, you can break it up into these two different normal distributions multiplied by each other. And this is, this term there is my prior, p of y. And the other one must be my posterior, p of x given y. And that's why it has a y in there. Right? Mm -hmm. and, it, and what we're going to see is that that mean is precisely what the equation for the common filter is. It is precisely, you know, um, x hat plus k times y minus y hat. This guy would stay down. All right, so let me, let me show it to you. So in our problem, what we have is that we have a normal distribution, and our prior has this mean, and it has um, c times x hat as the mean for y, and it has this variance-covariance structure. It has um, p of n, n minus 1. It has C transpose Okay, so this was our this is what we called sigma and this is the mean. This is mu x and mu y. how we started. Okay. So according to what I just wrote, I can write this as a normal distribution with mean um, mu x, which is x hat of n, n minus 1, plus sigma 1, 2, which is C transpose times um, sigma 2, 2, C, P of n, n minus 1, C transpose plus R minus 1 times Y minus its mean, which is um, C x out of N, N minus 1. This is its mean. And its variance is going to be the, um, the sure complement, which I think I just erased. But it's up there. It's sigma 1, 1. Um, it's, um, its variance is going to be um, p of n, n minus 1, minus sigma 1, 2, which is p of n, n minus 1, c transpose. Sigma 2, 2 inverse, which is going to be c, p of n, n minus 1, c transpose, plus r minus 1, times sigma 2, 1, which is c, p of n, n minus 1. So that's its variance. This times a normal distribution with mean um, of uh, y, which is c times x hat of n, n minus 1, and variance covariance sigma 2, 2, which is um, c p of n, n minus 1, c transpose plus r. All right, so this first term is my posterior probability, that's, so that's equal to, you know, that first term is p of x given y, the second term is p of y. So what's p of x given y? p of x given y is going to be this normal distribution with its mean and that variance. So as, as I wrote up there, so, so if you look at this equation here, what does this mean? This, when, I, when I say my x hat of n given n, that's equal to x hat of n given n minus 1, plus something that I call a common gain, k of n, times y minus y hat of n, right? So that's equal to x hat of n, my prior, plus um, this k. My k, by definition, was equal to um, p of n, n minus 1, c transpose, times um, 
the uncertainty of the observation, which is C, P of n, n minus 1, C transpose plus R minus 1 times Y minus my prediction on Y, which is C times X hat of n, n minus 1. So this is my, when I call this as my posterior, that's the mean of the posterior probability. My posterior uncertainty, P of n given n, was equal to I minus K of n, C times P of n, n minus 1. K is this, right? And that's the, that's the variance for the um, posterior um, uh, probability distribution. So what we did today is to take a joint probability, a Gaussian function, and we factored out the probability associated with the prior. In this case, we learned how to take an exponential distribution and make it so that we can write it in terms of multiplication of two exponentials. And when we did that, we found that the mean and the variance of what we call the posterior probability was, in fact, how we found the posterior associated with x, and what we call the p associated with the, uh, the, the, its variance. So this is the variance of the posterior probability, and this is the mean of the posterior probability. OK. I have to tell you, it's exhilarating to be able to actually do it on the board. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for your time. So David's going to teach you guys.